Hi friends and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is an environmental section beginners tutorial in Photoshop. So the first thing that you need for this tutorial is a 3D section that I exported from SketchUp in a hidden line style and I exported it as a PDF. You can also export it as a PNG and then just add that to Photoshop. I added a ground line because it was necessary otherwise the building looks like it's floating. And what I suggest that you first do is add all of the text and information because when I first started this diagram I was kind of overwhelmed with all of the things and icons and text that I wanted to add. So I would suggest you add the text first, such as room names, and then you start adding all of the information. And I'm adding these arrows to point to the areas of significance using the pen tool. To get this diagram very neat and organized, pick an angle that is from the section and use that. And you will use only this angle to create any text in the diagram. So you cannot change this angle, so make sure that it's not too narrow and not too wide so that you can add it both on the right side as well as the left side. So I'm going to start off with the reduced urban heat island which is by adding a green roof which cools down the roof and therefore reduces the urban heat island. And I really love adding anything I can in Photoshop because that saves me time of building it in SketchUp. So I'm also adding some light fixtures using a rectangle and also a line. So this line has a, an arrow at the end, but it doesn't matter because it doesn't show. And as you can see, I took the, the lines from the right side of the diagram and reflected it to the left because you cannot change the angle. And if you can make it as symmetrical as possible, so the text is aligned and if you can make the lines also parallel from the right and left that would also make it look more organized but of course it is not possible in every situation but the more that you do it the more organized and the more nicer your diagram is gonna look and again with my laziness in building things in sketchup i'm adding my solar panels in photoshop which are literally rectangles on an angle with the base and i'm selecting a different color for the stroke something to give it more attention so that the diagram doesn't look black black and white but you can also create this diagram fully black and white and whichever style that you want to create. So I've also added a green roof which is literally using a pattern texture and then using a grass brush blended out the edges a little bit to make it look like grass instead of just a rectangle because I've never seen grass that looks like that. And I've also created these arrowheads using the pencil which was very easy. You just make a rectangle and then you fill it with black. And because all of the lines are the same angle, it's very easy to just copy and paste them and then mirror them from the left to the right side. And now I'm adding some light and color to the space and it really brings the diagram to life. So I'm using the polygonal lasso tool on a new layer so then I can paint over it with like a yellow, yellowish color in a very large brush but it's soft and it has a low opacity and then I can blend up with an eraser. And I did the same thing to the worktop lights that are for the sewing machines and I was really lazy to do, well I, I wouldn't call myself lazy, I I'm just working smarter not harder. So I literally copied that and pasted it for all of the lights and then using the eraser I deleted it or erased the areas that didn't make sense and that's it. I'm also adding some textures to the ground floor. So the floor is made out of timber and the actual walls is made from rammed earth. Only because rammed earth needs to be protected from water and since it's right on the ground level, it won't work for it to be rammed earth unless it's raised from the floor. And as I said, I can't make something like that because these units are supposed to be movable from one place to another. And I also then added the wind direction and I've always added arrows from Google. But for this diagram, I actually used the pen tool to create this line and then you can use your white arrow in Photoshop and you can then adjust it afterwards. 
and I also use the pen tool again to add an arrowhead to suggest the movement of the wind. And I feel like it looks so much better than using the arrows that you find online because they're usually not that high quality and they don't really fit the diagram properly. I merged the line and the arrowhead and duplicated it because it always looks better when there's two lines instead of one. And actually it would look better for three but I don't have any more space. Now I'm also going to create another arrow which is a red arrow and this arrow is for the rammed earth and the walls to suggest its thermal properties. It doesn't really have that much thermal properties but it does retain heat. So I created it on one side and then copied it, reflected it and then merged both layers together to get a perfectly symmetrical arrow. And I'm just going to place that on the walls. So if you don't have rammed earth you have to look at materials that radiate heat so for example concrete has a very good thermal mass but as we all know is not very sustainable because it has a high carbon footprint so you need to find other materials that have high thermal mass that are sustainable there are other ways to make concrete more sustainable like using fly ash concrete but you'll have to do your research And then I also added a pattern to my clothing drop off. I love that texture very much, although it's actually a flooring texture, but I guess it works. And because it's angled, I think it adds a lot to the space. I'm going to add a sun now to uh, suggest the daylighting and I could never get the angle of the sun right and it's something that I have to work on. But I feel like the success of these diagrams always come back to its simplicity so please don't add suns that you find from google with like flames and different orange gradients so try to keep it very simple with just a circle and even all of the icons that you use try to make them really simple even for this cloud here i couldn't think of a better way to add cloud than a realistic cloud because i feel like if you added an icon or a vector graphic it might make it look a little less professional all of the clouds that I found had smiles on them, which didn't feel very professional to me. And I've also added a rain texture on top and I've blended out the edges to make it a little more natural and less rigid. And now I'm gonna do the pad for the rainwater collection and it's a very simple method using the pen tool and I am using a blue stroke and a blue fill and then I was like you know what the blue should match the blue of the rain because it's actually like we're collecting the rain so the colors should match. And I think that added such a nice touch to the diagram. I'm gonna add the final touch which is a human figure just to give scale to the diagram and then these texts drove me insane because I couldn't figure out where to put them. I don't like that they're so high up but otherwise they interfere with the rest of the diagram. Overall I'm really happy with diagram. You can add so much more to this. You can add even diagrams to the text on the right and text on the left, any details and it will make the diagram appear more thorough and I hope you guys enjoyed this video and don't forget that now you can book a call with me on superpeer i hope you guys are doing extremely well please give a like to the video if you enjoyed it and don't forget to share also leave a comment down below letting me know what are some of the ways that you are making your buildings more sustainable for 2021 i'm rasha shiruru and i'll see you next time